Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about the autocorrelation function, also known as the ACF. Uh, this is just one more tool for our time series tool belt here. Um, I'm not going to cover a lot of practical uses for it in this video, but this video is going to lay the groundwork for what we actually need. Um, we're going to also cover in another video, which will be the next video in this series, uh, it'll be the PACF or the partial autocorrelation function, which is a little bit more complicated, um, but let's just dive on in and start talking about the ACF. So in the first few videos, we covered business analytics time series, kind of the general concept of trend, uh, seasonality, cyclicality. Uh, many of you were asking, how do you actually calculate seasonality and cyclicality uh, without actually doing an eyeball test, right? Without just staring at the chart and saying, yeah, it looks about three months or four months or you know six months, so it's like quarterly or annually or something. Um, but this is how you'd actually test this. We're gonna use this in future models, for example, when we're building ARIMA models. Um, but let's just kind of dive into the theory here. Okay, so let's say we have a variable X and we're gonna denote this by T, which is time, I'll just put it here. But time will just be one, two, three, all the way down um, to capital T. Uh, this could be the same as having dates. So you could have like January, February, March, April, May, all the way through. Um, but let's just put a bunch of numbers here. So let's say it's 10, 12, 15, 18, 9, 8, I don't know, 12. And this is gonna be our series X. What we would want to do is figure out what is the correlation um, for different lags. So let's just say lag, of one uh, we would like to calculate which would be what is the correlation between 10 and 12 12 and 15 15 and 18 um, and so on and so you'd get some correlation here and you'd calculate it out it will be between zero and one so i don't really know what it is in this example but let's say like it is going to be 0.87 okay uh, that's fine and dandy and it's great to know that's one lag but as i mentioned before um there's gonna be like a seasonal component or a cyclical component. A lot of people forget that these are two very important aspects when using autocorrelation functions. Uh, they just view it as some mathematical property that gets plugged in a trial and error uh, when building models, but we wanna know this. And so in a more complex manner here, we would be interested in something, for example, like we would want to know what is uh, the correlation between uh, values with a lag of say three. So if this was monthly data, uh, this would be you know your quarterly values here. This is really common in a lot of types of data, especially time series data here. But lag three, instead of having you know 10 to 12, it would be lag of three, which would be 10. This would be one, two, three. So this piece here would be one lag, 10 to 12. And then the next one would be um, 12 to nine, and then it would be 15 to eight. Anyways, and you get some correlation here. So let's say in this case, um, our value is going to be like 0.95. So this would be a really good indication there's a high correlation between uh, values three lags apart. Uh, mathematically, right, this would look something like if you had some trend like this, and it might not be perfect, uh, but you could say essentially from here, this would be time one, and this would be, for example, like time four, which would be three lags apart, and then this would be lag seven. Uh, but essentially, you'd have some cyclical or seasonal component here. So every three lags, we would have some relationship that's repeating over and over. Um, a lot of times, though, you might end up with something, for example, where you have like a lag of two, and your calculation here, so again, if you did this, it would be between... Um, let's clean this up real quick. So a lag of two here would be a calculation between 10 and 15, and then it'd be 12 and 18, you know, and so on and so forth. You're lagging of two, and you might get some correlation of like 0 0.05, right? Maybe 0 0.59 or something. But this would be insignificant. There's no correlation between them, so it adds no value. So now looking at different lags here. So, you know, lag one is 0 0.87 basically. Uh, and then let's say we have, you know, lag two, which we mentioned below is going to be zero five nine. And then you'd have lag three. And let's say, you know, that was 0 0.95. And then you'd have lag four equals, I don't know, 0 0.87 again. Anyways, it goes down until something you want to look at. So a lot of times I look at lag 
uh, 12. So when you're using monthly data, it gives you a full year. Um, you might go all the way up to 24 um, if you're gonna be looking at you know multiple years here. And so you'd look at all these numbers here and it's kind of complicated. And yeah, you could pick out, you know, like, oh, this one's the highest, you know, maybe lag four is decaying a little bit, but it's kind of complicated to look at numbers. And what we really want to do is create some chart here. And we want this chart to give us um, on the bottom here, we're just going to put lag. So we want the number of lags. And we'd like something with either a dot. So like, okay, it has a high lag here. And then it went to lag two and it was almost zero. And then it was up to here at 0.95 and then 0.87. And I don't know, maybe it has some stuff like this. But what we'd want here is gonna say, you know, have one, two, three, all the way out to say, I don't know, 12. But we wanna see this chart because this chart's gonna visually give us an indication of A, which one is gonna be the highest value, which is important. And B, it's gonna give us the lag structure. So I'm not gonna cover this a lot in this video, but the lag structure itself will tell us a lot about the fitting of an ARIMA model. Um, an ACF chart, just for your information, this is gonna be used for a moving average term when you use an ARIMA. It's not really important right now, but let's dive into some actual code on how this would really work. Okay, so before we get into actual coding, let's just think about this logically and how we would set this up in code. Um, you're not going to need to build your own functions. There's already a lot of stuff built but you should know exactly what you're looking for and what you need. Uh, and basically how these work, so you get more intuition behind the math and the theory of fitting the model, and then being able to use this theory to generate a very feasible story on why your model is correct. But first we'd have X, so you'd have X, we'll just call it of T, and you'd have your numbers, right? 12, 18, 9, 7, 3, I don't know, 21. And then to program this, we'd want to create a second column. We'll call it Y of T minus one. And we're gonna have a value here, in R it would be in A, in other languages it could be like a dot. But then you would have this T series lag, so then it would be 12, 18, 9, 7, 3, 21. Um, the issue though here is that your length, so remember in R, if you follow my um, R video series, uh, you'd have length of X and this one here would be equal to seven. So we'd have seven in total for this vector. But if you calculated out x of t right, um, the length here is going to be equal to six. So we have an issue, we have unequal columns. Uh, in programming, what we're gonna end up doing is dropping the 21. And so we want some nice pretty table, which is like x of t, and it would have like 12, 18, nine, seven, three, 21. And then we'd want the second you know, vector here within this matrices or within this data set, depending how you look at it, um, to be, you know, NA, and then we would want 12, 18, 9, 7, 3, and then we'd want to have another column, which would go on to minus 2, and you could do this out to, you know, XT minus N, so however many you want to do, but this one would be NA, NA, and then you'd have 12, 18, nine, seven, and so forth. But normally you'd have massive columns, at least like 50, 60, 70 uh, rows if possible. Time series can be quite short, so this is a little bit of a challenge. Uh, but we're gonna do this, and what we're gonna end up doing here is when we calculate out uh, the correlation between T minus one and T, uh, we're gonna lose this first piece, and we're gonna lose the last piece that we saw over here. So this is gonna get lost, uh, and this is gonna get lost. So we will calculate the correlation on here, and this will give us um, our ACF value for lag of one. And then of course, since now we have a smaller data set here, the second one's gonna be calculated um, off this smaller set, and then this would give you your ACF of two, um, and then you go all the way out to ACF of N, which is whatever value you're calculating here. And that's how we're gonna do it programmatically. Um, but let's just look at some actual code, because in the real world, you're gonna be using code, you're not gonna be doing this by hand. Step one here, we're just gonna create a vector of numbers. And as somebody pointed out in another video, um, you can just hit Alt-Enter to run your code. Again, I'm not a huge fan of this for teaching you guys in the video because it ends up running too much stuff sometimes or it's like you can highlight it and it runs exactly what you want. But it just makes it easier for you guys to see if I copy and paste it in. If you put an X, it'll show you uh, that's exactly what we just created. So we'll put X here. 
And then simplistically for most of you, you're just gonna want to run some sort of ACF test. You're not gonna care about how it's done. Um, but I do emphasize here, please, please take the time to understand this because it does have massive impacts on the model building process. And this will be the difference between you sitting at a computer frustrated because your model either doesn't work and you can't find a solution, uh, or if you're in industry and you build some model and it goes to some validation team and someone like me looks at it and they fail it, this is exactly why, because you didn't take the time to review this. Um, but if you type in ACF, it is built in the stats package inside of R. Uh, you can see here on the right, there's gonna be a bunch of parameters that you can put in. We're not gonna worry about that right now. Uh, we're just gonna take this and put an X, which was our column here. So if we copy this and paste this below, it's gonna generate this nice pretty chart here on the right, okay? This chart is quite well designed, at least in my opinion. Uh, the bars are clear and easy to see. Um, the blue lines here, these are just the significant levels. So anything above or below these lines indicate that there's like a serious problem that we should consider. Um, anything that is inside of these two blue lines between zero, it's not statistically significant that you have some sort of ACF function. Uh, this doesn't guarantee that it doesn't exist, so you might need to add something um, to kind of manipulate the model, which we'll look at later. And you can see here on this chart on the bottom, it goes from zero up to 12 automatically. Uh, so, you know, a series by itself with zero lag is obviously going to be one. And then you can see here our lag of one has a correlation of greater than 0.5. Anyway, so you can see here that it has this nice chart. It has all the features we like so far. Um, we're gonna use these in later videos when we start doing model fittings and looking for seasonality and cyclicality um, inside of like an ARIMA model structure. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.